What is up Apple lovers and welcome to another episode of the Tech Hub. This is my Apple budget buy series where I review old Apple tech which is still usable and affordable today. This episode looks at the third generation iPad Pro 11 inch which was released in April 2021. Is it still worth it in 2024? Let's find out. Let's start the episode. <laughs> Said, we're going to delve into this iPad Pro 11 inch today and um, this is the third generation. Uh, this one's actually the um, Wi-Fi and cellular model with 256 gigabytes capacity. Now where this video came from, um, I thought I'd test it out for a week and see how it's going since I've been with the iPad 13 inch M4. Uh, for a few months now uh, and actually um, I enjoyed the entire week just using this as my main iPad. However, before we delve into this, let's have a word from our sponsor. UPDF are sponsoring this video, so big thanks to them. Are you looking for a powerful and cost-effective alternative to Adobe Acrobat? Meet UPDF, the ultimate PDF editing tool that's designed to meet all your PDF needs without breaking the bank. Here are eight reasons why UPDF is a good PDF editor and a good Adobe Acrobat alternative. Reason number one, UPDF is a professional grade PDF editor. Whether you're adding text, annotating documents or merging PDFs, UPDF offers all the tools you need for clean and precise document management. Reason number two, it's AI powered features with the summarize tool. You can quickly understand hundreds of pages in minutes. No more language barriers with the translate feature. The explain PDF feature gives you a deeper understanding of any content. And you can even use AI chat to get instant answers to any questions. Not to mention UPDF's AI can convert your PDFs into mind maps and allow you to chat with images. Just copy, paste and ask away. Reason number three, UPDF works seamlessly across all of your devices, Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. One license covers four devices at once, and you can even get 10 gigabytes of cloud storage or 110 gigabytes with the AI add-on. Reason number four, UPDF is always evolving with regular updates and new features, sometimes as frequently as every week. Reason number five, you get responsive customer support available 24 six. You'll never be left in the dark. Reason number six, it's cost effective. UPDF is a fraction of the cost of Adobe Acrobat, about one quarter of its price. And it's still half the price of many other PDF editors. Plus, UPDF gives you full access on all platforms, whereas most competitors make you pay separately for each one. Reason number seven, UPDF is perfect for both individuals and enterprises. It offers effective deployment and centralized license management, making it easy to manage your team's access. And lastly, and certainly not leastly, reason number eight, there's no risk. UPDF offers a three day money back guarantee so that you can try it completely worry free. And of course, there's a free edition with less of the features just so you can get used to it. UPDF is more than just a PDF editor. It's an all-in-one solution designed to make your life easier. So why wait? Try UPDF today and see the difference yourself. Click the link in this video description and go check it out. Thank you to UPDF for sponsoring this video. Okay, so like I said, I used this for about a week and it has inspired me to move back to the 11 inch next time I upgrade as the reasons I got the 13 inch M4 iPad Pro uh, on, and no need for a larger display anymore. So is no longer a thing. Um, and the 11 inch is the sweet bot for my current use cases, especially just chilling on the sofa. It really is the ideal size. I did a recent change from my MacBook, taking it down from 15 inch to 13 inch. For my non-gaming, no pro, non-pro uses, the M1 is just as snappy. Uh, and as, al as I always use a case and a screen protector, I didn't notice the thinness and the display upgrade the M4 iPad has. 
Um, so this one is very comfortable still. The only iPad I use I can compare the difference to is my iPad mini 6th generation. And I can really feel the ProRes display with the 120 hertz refresh rate and the speed of the glorious M1 chip. Of course, there is a 12.9 version uh, of every iPad Pro that we're going to talk about today, but we're just gonna focus on the 11 inch. Okay, so let's look at the iPad Pro third generation specifications. So this comes in two colors, silver and space gray. The one I've used for a week is silver, and actually I've changed all of my stuff to silver or stylike, which I think looks stunning. The capacity of the hard drive is 128 gigabytes, 256 gigabytes, 512 gigabytes, one terabyte or two terabyte. Now, just like the most recent models, the one terabyte and two terabyte actually have 16 gigs of RAM as well. Size and weight, I mean, it's, it's thicker than the brand new thinnest Apple device ever created, um, but that's fine. Um, I'm not gonna go through each, each height and dimension. However, it does weigh 466 grams uh, or 1.03 pounds. The cellular model weighs an extra 0.1 grams. Uh, buttons there's, and, and connections, there's five microphones, four speakers, and it has Thunderbolt USB 4. So a really good USB-C connection there. The display is liquid retina display, 11 inch, which is LED backlit. Um, the resolution is 2,388 by 1,668. It has ProMotion, wide color display three, true tone display, and 600 nits max. So I'm not even gonna compare it with the brand new ones with that awesome dual display. It also supports Apple Pencil 2. Now the chip in it, and really the highlight, is the Apple M1 chip, which is eight core CPU with four performance cores and four efficiency cores, eight core GPU and 16 core newer engine. It's got eight gigs of RAM, um, which is awesome because that's what you need for Apple intelligence when it does eventually come. Now the camera has a wide and an ultra wide camera. The wide is a 12 meg megapixel. The ultra wide is a 10 megapixel. It has a two times optical zoom out and digital zoom up to five times. Now this was the big change from the, from the previous generation as well. Video recording wise, you can do 4K at 24, 25, 30 or 60 frames per second or 1080p at 25, 30 six, or 60 frames per second. The front facing camera is a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. Um, you can record in 1080p video at 25, 30 or 60 frames per second. Um, it does look great on FaceTime. There's always, oh, they, they put rubbish cameras on the front. I never had a problem with it. And it does support center stage as well. As for cellular and wireless, this does have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0. Uh, the cellular model has 5G and they also introduced eSIM at this point. UK models still have the uh, SIM tray though as well. So going back to the USB-C port, the Thunderbolt USB 4, um, it supports charging, display, Thunderbolt 3 up to 40 gigabytes per second, USB 4 up to 40 gigabytes per second, and USB 3 up to 10 gigabytes per second. So it's a super duper fast connection. So the power and the battery, um, it has a built-in 28.65 watt hour battery. They always claim up to 10 hours of usage. I've never had uh, an issue with my batteries at all. They handle it very well, especially that um, M1 chip, which helps with the efficiencies. As for the OS, uh, it was released with iPad OS 15. It is compatible with iPad OS 18. Uh, and of course, because it's got the M1 chip and eight gigs of RAM, it is compatible with Apple intelligence. So let's compare this model to the newer one and a previous one as well. So first is the fourth generation. The only difference is the M2 chip with two extra GPU cores. I'm not even gonna put up any graphics. That's it, literally. So first is the previous generation, the second generation. That had an A12Z chip with only eight core newer engine versus 16 on the third generation Pro. Another difference is the front facing camera was only seven megapixel and no center stage. It had USB-C, uh, but it didn't have Thunderbolt 4. Um, it had 4G, but not 5G. Um, if we go back another generation, the first generation only had an A12X chip with only eight, eight core neural engine and a seven core GPU versus 16 neural engine and an eight core GPU on the third Pro. 
Um, on the back, it only had a single 12 megapixel wide camera. The front camera was only seven megapixel, no center stage. It had USB-C again, no Thunderbolt 4. Um, and Wi-Fi wi was only five and it only had 4G. So the thing with the iPad Bros, it's pretty much kept the same form factor um, until this recent model, the M4 model, uh, where actually I think not only was it the M4 that attracted anybody to the newer iPads, um, but it also the form factor changed at last after four generations. So that's good going. Now let's talk about the pricing. So I'm going to base this on the base model, which is 128 gigabyte storage, Wi-Fi only. There isn't any on the Apple refurb store in the UK. They only had one terabyte models. Um, but they still charge up to £789 for the second generation Pro with one terabyte. Um, with the third gen, of course, you can use an external hard drive uh, if storage is important to you. So I wouldn't get it refurbed from Apple. Even though you get a terabyte, you can just use a hard drive on a newer one and save your money. So on eBay, depending on the condition, you can get the third generation for between £450 and £550. The fourth gen is £550 to £600, um, and that's an average price on Buy It Now. So for an extra £100 for two extra GPU cores, it's not worth it. Now the second generation, £370 to £450, but of course at this point, the uh, batteries are getting old. So I would really pay the extra to get the M1. Any Apple device with the M1 is the way to go. They are completely epic. You're gonna get Apple intelligence. M1 is still, is, it's called lightning and it's shooting, honestly. I, I cannot praise the M1 enough. And actually, if I didn't have my M4 or it broke tomorrow, I would easily get an M1 and still be satisfied. So let me summarize here. So after using this for a week, I realized how Actually, as much as I love my iPad Pro 13-inch M4, um, it's a luxury item. And the M1 iPad Pro, third generation 11-inch, is more than enough power and capability for most, most users. As I already said, the 11-inch is the perfect size for iPadding. And the next time I change my iPad device, I'm slimming down to the 11-inch. It's only when you get into AAA gaming titles or pro apps such as photo editing and video editing that you will notice the difference of the power of the M4 compared to the M1 chip. All hail the M1 chip. So thank you for watching this episode. Do you have an iPad third generation? Let me know in the comments below. Do you love the M1 chip as much as I do? Are you thinking about getting one and this video has helped you? Let me know in the comments below. Please like this video and subscribe to me. You can also follow me on Instagram and threads at TechHubWorldsUK. I'll see you on the next episode.